my dad is 72 and then my son is like two and I'm 37. So I'm like the half, I'm the Rihanna halftime show. With, you know. And they're both on like two ends of the couch, like on the iPad, doing the same thing, being like, eh. like they're both angry at the iPad. And I'm just in the middle. Oh, I love this. But I'm hurtling towards this. I'm hurtling towards, towards your father. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Yes. Like it's good. It, it, this is the way it's going to end. Yeah. What are you doing in between? In the, that? Yeah, I know. Yeah. This is getting too heavy. Um, <laughs> this is getting, this is getting like so I love real. it though. I love it. No, really? I, are you kidding me? This, this is my favorite part. Funny. This is my favorite part. <laughs> this is not very funny. No, I love it's this. Sad. And I, I think this, I hope this is what your next hour is about. So you are currently working on your third hour. Yes. And that I want to do as a special. Right. Yeah. And so you're, so this is your favorite part? This moment the process? right now is my favorite part of the process. Yeah. Why describe that to me? Uh, it is all blue sky and possibility. Yeah, and uh, it could be anything. Mm -hmm. uh, there's parts of it where, for people that that aren't comedians that are listening to this, it your show gets to a certain point where it pretty much is what it is, and then you just have to hit like um, human retweet every night. Oh, interesting. You're like I Chicago theater, eight o'clock. Retweet it. That's really interesting. So. Yeah. Whereas now, it is the creation period. Yeah, anything's possible. Put the beginning. Yeah, do do your do the beginning at the front. Right. You know what? Actually, don't even do your closer. Right. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm gonna go back and forth. This is the this is the way my mind works. So I'll go between basketball analogies and comedy. Okay. And and my friends make fun of me that about this, and they're like, "Why do you do that?" And I'm like, "It's the only two things like I know." <laughs> okay. I'm not gonna just like jump to a, another sort of metaphor. So when you're when you start out, you like learn like very basic fundamentals where they go, hey, you have the mic and the mic stand. Okay. Don't keep the mic stand in front of you. Right. So there's like early performances of me at the Sacramento Punchline, and there's like a fucking mic stand in front of me, and mm. like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like, it's very basic. Like, put the mic stand behind you and continue. Right. Right. Um, early lessons in stand-up. Very comedy. early lessons yeah. or whatever. Same thing with like. Just shooting form, just like, okay, get, get it in a pocket here. Use this as a guiding thing. Yeah, and just follow through versus like when you go play pickup, say on West 4th, and there's a guy in like khakis and dress shoes just straight up doing anything and everything. And you're like, oh, I think this guy's here for cardio. Or he's having some sort of mental breakdown and he's right. playing pickup with us right now. Right. He doesn't really play basketball. Right. I think you that's tell me. By, yeah, sure, sure. Or you can tell by like the way they like shoot. Like, oh, they're shooting from here. Or oh, right. Yeah, there's no... So the basics, people. the fundamentals. Yeah. Same with stand-up. Okay. Um, all of that's really important. But at the same time, things can be so rigid and comedy class-ish. Yeah. It becomes... Set up punch, tag, tag. Yeah, it becomes predictable. Yeah. It becomes... Uh, I expect and I already know what's going to happen. Yeah. And one of the, the things that you love or I love most about art and the form, at least the form of comedy is like, you got to surprise me a little you bit. You have to. There has to be something here that subverts my expectation. This is such an important, any creatives listening, yes. this is such a great universal for all art. Yes. Which is surprise. Yes. You have to. Yes. And I agree with you. So, so there's the bread and butter things that mm -hmm. you want to have in order. You want to have jokes. You want to have stories. You want to have some kind of structure, but you also... You have to have a spontaneity to it. Correct. Yeah. Spont spontaneity. And then another thing that I felt like, oh, I got to work on this a little bit more, and I have to be deliberate about it, um, is this feeling of, like, fun. Yeah. Um, and you get to a certain level, and you got to do so many shows yeah. on the road, and you're, like, you're just jamming the show into, like, oh, it's got to be this, and this has to cl close cleanly and then go to this, go to yeah. this, go to, which is all very well and important. Yeah. But I don't know if you've experienced this. You can also become a caricature of yourself. Yeah. Of like, Birbiglia is going to do the Birbiglia thing and he's going to Birbiglia his way out of it. You had Jim it's, on this. Gavigan will yeah, have yeah. a Gaffigan way out yeah, of it. Yeah. Mulaney, I will, we'll all have our moves and you're not defying expectations. In fact, you're just delivering yeah, straight I up know. on expectations. Yeah. Um, and then this is for me personally, is uh, like, are you surprising yourself? And there was times, especially on the last tour, I was not having fun on the road. Yeah, like, this is actually isn't fun. Yeah, um, and I'm not like surprising myself in new ways. Yeah, in discovering new things. And to go back to basketball, did you see the new the Steph Curry doc on Apple? 
No. TV Plus. I can't wait now. Oh, that's great. Now that it's, you're saying it. It's really, it. really, really wonderful and fantastic. But one of the things I I hate about Curry being a Sacramento Kings fan is I hate the Warriors and the Lakers because the Bay and LA always shit on Sacramento. Yeah, yeah. We're a very common punchline. That being said, as Steph is entering this final chapter of his career, I do have to give him props and be like, you're fucking amazing. Yeah. You're great. But more importantly, and the thing, the lesson that I took away from him is he's having so much fucking fun. Wow. And when I watch him play, I'm like, oh, he's not doing the set. Fuck, he's not doing the set. Interesting. In fact, he's like doing the Sunday brunch set while Esty's watching and being like, oh, my set? Goodbye. Oh, he's doing the Montreal showcase while Robbie's in the room at comics. And you're using and, so many and, names that people don't and know. And he's fucking punting it. He's okay. like, oh, this. So oh, you're this. saying yeah. Steph Curry in basketball is doing the equivalent of in stand-up comedy, doing a set, throwing away your set list. Yeah, yeah. Disregarding whether the Booker for Montreal or the Booker for the Comedy Cellar the is stage. watching you yes. on the biggest stage. Yes, yeah, that's interesting. W while his like mouth guard is like hanging out of his mouth like this, being like, "Oh, I'm not even trying right now." By the way, oh, you're wearing a mouth guard for protect. It's if it's if a quarterback were to do a play in the fourth quarter and yeah. have his helmet just hanging off his head, be like, "Oh, I'm not even going to pull it down. I don't care." All that is to say is it was inspiring. It made me realize oh, this thing should also be extremely fun and it should be playful. And um, I think the place that, and I, I did this very much following in your footsteps, there was a, a part of me that really wanted to honor the form and the function of what this is. Um, and in the process of that, I may have lost a little bit of like, just like the pure unbridled yeah. joy and fun of it. The wow. looseness, yeah, the looseness of it. So inspiring talking to you. I'm so glad that we that we're meeting up today. This is really giving me a fire. Why? Why is this so inspiring? I always find you so inspiring. In what, but what, because I love your work. Okay. And then when you talk, when we're just talking, this is might as well not be rolling camera, rolling sound. Uh -huh. Like this is just how we talk. Yes. And that was the goal of the podcast in the first place. Totally. Is like, what's it like behind the scenes with two people who create stuff? Yeah. And how does that affect your life? How does that affect your work or whatever? And so I love that. I love that you're sharing this with me because also like selfishly, I'm like, oh, this is going to push me into writing my next hour right now. And because I'm in writing my next movie right now, because I'm exactly the same place. Like 40 minutes is hot of my new hour. I was yeah. just at a club in New Jersey this weekend. I was like, 40 minutes is ready to go and mm. it's like what's the other what's the other 40 what's the arc right for me that's what it is yeah but like with with your specials they have an arc they have uh they they uh they bring you on a journey with you yes S some very few stand-up comedians you know brennan and you and me and uh, Hannah Gadsby, look, there's a, hand, a Alex, handful. There's a, it's quite Alex Adelman, yeah, yeah. there's a handful of people. And in the UK, there's a lot, a whole right, lot. Right, yeah. who do these shows that are shows. It's like, and a lot of times people ask me this, and I'll, I'll say the same thing to you. Why? I have my own answer. I'm curious why you do it. Oh, interesting. Um, As opposed to just doing an hour of straight stand-up. Yeah, for me, at least the, the um, selfishly, like... I found myself to be, I, I was trying to be as like green room, I'm hanging with my friends, conversational, funny and interesting on yeah. stage. Yeah. So like there were times that I felt like when I would talk to people about comedy or about my set or the thing that I'm working on, they'd be like, oh, that's really interesting. Uh... But kind of like my Rooster Tea Feathers seven minute set could not capture that. Yes. So it's like, how do I show you how interesting my mind? And again, the audience is like, what's Rooster, Rooster Tea Feathers? Feathers? The Rooster Tea Feathers is a comedy is club in, in Sunnyvale. Cal Southern yeah, yeah, California. yeah. That, that famously does not have a green room. You actually have to like Rooster Tea Feathers. hang out. I can't in, we work in places in called Rooster, Rooster Tea, Tea Feathers. Feathers yeah, and next, go to bananas a, next to a tire shop. Stress yeah, yeah, factory. Yeah, like, what do. are we doing? Yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Like yeah, but I I also there's a photo it. of you in Rooster Tea Feathers. There's a photo of Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, and Rooster Tea Feathers. Yeah, wow. Yeah, from like the like like a like a booklet from like 1981 or something like that. That's so funny. Well, you know that yours and my history 
goes to Montreal Comedy Festival. You did New Faces as yeah. well as a gala. And I want to say it was like 2013 ish. Yeah. And you were so cool to me. You were very nice to me. Well, yeah. it was funny because I mean, it's selfishly nice. I didn't know you. I just saw you on stage in real time. I uh-huh. go, this guy's hilarious, which is the best way to, as a comedian, it's the best way to meet somebody. Uh-huh. You don't have to fake a compliment. Yeah. yeah. When you meet them, you go, hey, Grace, huh? <laughs> okay, all right. That was good. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. A- Oh, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because it's like, it's the greatest gift when someone's hilarious. That's very cool. And you Thank were you. Yo- a young kid, and I was just able to be like, yeah. dude, come on. You're amazing. Uh-huh. Amazing comic. Thank you. And then and then I was like, where are you from? And you were like, Davis. I go, uh-huh. playing Davis in like two months. Center, you should come yeah, You yeah. should come open for me if you want. Uh-huh. You go, absolutely. Uh-huh. Cut to, you get the Daily Show. Like three weeks later, you're like, hey, man. I'm moving to New I York. I can't, yeah. can't do it. I'm yeah, moving to New York to pa- be on the Daily but Show. my parents get tickets. And they did go. They loved the show, yeah. And so we met then. Yeah. Here's what I always, I always, I always, I always think about working it out in relation to... If you have this person here, what's your burning question? Uh-huh. My burning question for you is, you had success fast. Mm-hmm. What did it feel like to have people resent you? Because they probably did. Mm. So I was 30 when we met. So I wasn't Yeah, 30. you're young. Is that young for comedy to make it? Come on. 30? 30? 30 is like, I think young. I mean, if you, you know, real young would be 24. Four twenty five. Yeah, I mean, but- c- considering what, what I gave up. So I was supposed to go to law school, and then I deferred and then denied my admission. Wow. So I basically, like... Perfect for plot points. Burned the... I burned the boats. Yeah. Um, <laughs> at 25. Yeah. So the, the, that those five years before I, I you know, was a very uh, stressful time for me personally. 20 through 20... 20 through 2 25 through 25 to 30. 25 through 30. Right. Because... At the time, I was like, "Oh, you're so you you basically took a really great career path forward, and you set it on fire. Yeah. You didn't do the part time thing. You didn't go like, oh, I go to I'm an L one student by day, yeah, and I do stand up at night, yeah. You really believe this is gonna work, yeah. While you know you're a feature act occasionally at Tommy T's comedy club in Pleasant. <laughs> oh, love the name. Are you out of your mind? You know what I mean, Tommy so, T's. Tommy T's in Pleasanton. Yeah, wow. yeah." And so what was the cut the cutoff was rejecting the acceptance into law school. Yeah, it was basically if you give yourself an out, you're always going to be like one foot in, one foot out. Yeah. You're going to do this part time. And everybody that I looked up to in the bay that was like really serious about it, Ali Wong, Moshe Kasher, W Kamau Bell, Arj Barker, all of them they were like all in. Yeah. You know, and you know this, like when you're uh, coming up, there's the, okay, we all like this. We're all passionate about it. And then the, oh, he's like for real, for real. All, all yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I imagine from what I understand about you, you were that at Georgetown, right? Yeah, it was all, once I got into the improv group, I was all in on my whole life being comedy forevermore. Wow. Yeah. So that like 19. Yeah, 19. Wow. That was wild. That is wild. Yeah. Because it was... It was just a, it was just a real inflection point. It was okay. like a true kind of like, I want to do this. And then once I got the improv group friends, yeah. I was like, oh, these are my folks, you know. Like, yeah. and I feel that. By the way, I'm 45. I feel that today still. Mm. Like when I see like you and Ronnie like going at each other. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Uh-huh. I'm like, that's why I love being a comedian. Yeah, it's the funnest. Like, uh-huh. to me. It's like a it's like a life choice uh-huh. of like the types of people you like to be around, like to give each other a hard time, and it's I, I don't know, but what I was gonna what I was gonna say about the Ronnie thing too is, like you and I are close friends, but don't, we don't roast each other. No. And I was thinking today, I was like, what would be your roast of me? Oh wow. Because I got a lot on you. I would have to. I it, I would if I had to do it. I would like do. I would I would do an act out. It would have to yeah, be yeah. it would be very physical and I'd have to take a joke and then I would like stretch it out. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I would let I would kind of putter. I would putter out <laughs> Putter. Yeah. Putter. <laughs> Softly putter. Yeah. Mine of you would just be like literally what Trevor Noah said about you, which is like uh-huh. you and Bean are Indian Barbie and Ken. Right. Like you look too good. Like, my thought about you is, like, 
how long does it take you to get out of the house? Your hair looks perfect. <laughs> okay. Okay. Everything, everything looks nice. Your uh-huh. shoes are perfect. Uh-huh. It's like, how long is it? What does it, what does it take you? An hour? No, it doesn't take me an hour, but um, that's very <laughs> sweet of you to say. That's very sweet of you. <laughs> It was very sweet of you to say. I'm just going to accept the couple. We don't need to go You're down You're a this beautiful road. couple. Oh, thank you. Yes. You're very beautiful. <laughs> With beautiful children. Yeah. I don't know. You know, there's certain people in your life. And by the way, I've, I people don't know this. People don't know. I'm going to say, you can cut this out. Okay. People don't know, know. People think you and Mulaney are like very nice guys, which you are. <laughs> but people don't know. You can fucking suplex people through tables. <laughs> yeah. Like if you play WCW for Zen WO and N64 and it's like reverse and then they fucking suplex you through a table. You are so good at being like, nice guy, nice guy. And then you tap, 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 tap. And then you like fucking reverse it and slam through a table. When I did the correspondence dinner, dude, Mulaney could send, would send David Angelo and me these fucking haymakers. Oh, yeah. That would just no, Mulaney is body people. Brutal. Yeah. Brutal. And he would have 12. He could just like, yeah yeah chat gpt just like for me it's because it was incredible i came up at the cellar yeah in the early 2000s just getting bullied by like patrice Mm o'neill like and todd lynn and all these guys who were like the great bullies yes like (laughs) like the greatest bullies of all time yeah and so honestly i didn't even really hold my own with them I just wow. stayed alive. Yeah. And by staying alive, I got good enough to just be like, all right. So what was your Tai Chi? Because were you at that move, moment? Because at that moment, you were probably like Mike Birbiglia, Conan, um, guitar set. Yeah, they we, and they would bring that up quite Isn't a that bit. crazy? Like, I knew you before <laughs> I knew you. I know. <laughs> like, I was like, like, oh, yeah, 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 the thing. And then he had this, like, other special. Then there's two drink mic. And I, like, knew you. And then now I know you. Like, I have your uh, number, and I can text you, and I can call it's you. It's truly bizarre, the whole thing. It's so surreal. No, I mean, I, I first of all, I, I played guitar early in my career. I tried a lot of things. Uh-huh. Yeah. You try everything when you're starting out. I yeah. sounded like Mitch Hedberg. Yeah. I, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you just copy everything you see. Sounded like Stephen Lynch for f- f- five minutes. Yes. Sounded like Mitch Hedberg for five minutes. Sounded like Greg Duralis for five but minutes. But your story's so inspiring to me because of that. Oh, but but the the thing that you have, the secret special skill you have, that I feel like you don't sort of brag about is like you did that Obama thing and like you made fun of his playlist from the year. It's oh. so funny. <laughs> All right. And it's so bold because like But is it though? But yes, like, is it? Yes. Because yeah, because I would be like, oh no, like, what if he just cuts this off? Oh. You know what I mean? What if really? he just what if he goes cold? Okay. Don't you have that? Because you have a thing in your in your personality, yeah. which isn't in your offstage personality, which is your shit starter. Your your onstage persona, like you start things. Uh huh. Like that could be like that could have made it bad. Yes, I could. You asked like one of the most influential people in the last century. Yes. Like, hey, by the way, there's no way you watch and listen to all this stuff. Yeah. And like that could go badly. What were you thinking in that moment? What was the calculation? So the calculation in that moment is like, they're, they're always, what I try to bring to these interviews, whether it's like President Obama or Prime Minister Trudeau or whatever, there has to be this like, so I have a text thread with all my boys that we grew up in high school yeah. together. We, yeah. we, we've played basketball since we were in middle school. We're called, yeah. Hit, we're called Hit Squad, okay? We played in like basketball. I've heard of you, yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. You know Hit Squad. And you've obviously heard of what we've done at the 24-Hour Fitness Basketball League in the Sacramento, greater Sacramento area since the yeah, early 2000s. lesser known stuff, yeah, for sure. Of course, Hit Squad. <laughs> so Hit Squad, we are, we're on a text thread. But there's always this thing of like, what would Hit Squad ask of me if they knew I, you got to. I went to go meet Michael Jordan or I met Steven Spielberg? Yeah. They'd be like, how tall is he? Well, no, right. They would always ask right. you that sort of thing. So I always approach it from a very like, come on bro level with me yeah thing and from a place of like i'm not here to get you yes like i'm not here on behalf of the wallstreetjournal.com right to be like mr berbiglia comedy's in an existential moment right now and with the threat of democracy do you feel like some of the jo- and you're like okay you're trying to corner me right. into like yes. giving you a, a sound bite on cancel culture yes got it like i'm not interested in this yes but if there was like, uh, 
I, I tried to approach it from like a, it's a very like come on level with me question. Yeah. But it's also innocuous. It is a warm up joke. Oh, that's interesting. Do you really read all those books? Yeah. Do, really? Like you read this book by Abdul Razak Gurna? Yeah. Okay. Mr. President, what happened in Tar? <laughs> what, what happened? What was your favorite thing uh, about Tar? And you cannot say Kate Blanchett. So explain Tar to me. That's very funny. And then if you can, then explain American healthcare to me. Like that sort of like I love that. just level with me. And yeah. I think he could sense, oh, he's like being real right now. Yeah. Like I'm just like, just fuck the lav mic. Like you you really read all those ten books. Yeah. And Scribbs Riley is one of your favorite artists of 2020. Yes. Really? Yeah. Or, you know what I mean? Did and, you come away from it believing that he had? Um, the moment that where I believed him is where he goes, dude, how much time we got? And I was like, oh, oh, I like tried to check your cred and you're like, don't. I think the music stuff, he was like, I'll let it slide where he's like, you think you're the guys are the only ones that. Listen to music and, you know, like like irreverent stuff. But when I checked him on, like, the, you don't read all that much. I think 44 felt, hey, 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 don't come at, like, my ability to read a briefing yeah. and, like, be an intellectually curious person. That's interesting. But my place was, like, but we're both married guys with children. Like, yeah. there's just too right. much. Where's the time? Where's the fucking time? Yeah. You know. What, what wouldn't you ask him? Out of respect. So there was a thing at the very end of the interview called, let's not talk about it. Oh, really? Let's not talk about it. Yeah. But what I wanted to signal to him was like, I know this, each of these is like an hour and a half conversation, but let's not talk about it. Yeah. So I also cashed it in a joke. So I had, I had all these cards. And so one of the cards was like, it was like Guantanamo Bay. Let's not talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, Edward Snowden. Yeah, yeah. Drone strikes in Pakistan at a wedding. Let's not talk about it. Oh my god. Let's just not talk about it. Oh my god. And then I was like, boxers, briefs, commandos in chief. <laughs> and then he's like, let's not talk about it. And I go, classified, I know. So what I did is like what I wanted to do was each of these alone. They're major. Drone strikes is foreign policy yeah, and yeah. the war on terror. Right? This this alone is like a two and a half hour conversation. Of course. Let's not but I need to Snowden, like that alone, privacy and all yeah. that whistleblowing, that's a two-hour yeah. conversation. Um, Guantanamo, obviously, in his campaign, was like, my first day in office, I'm going to close it. Did not. I was like, yeah. okay, we don't need to talk about it. Yeah. But what I had to signal to him was like, I know. And to the audience, I know. Yeah. Because I also had to be like, you are a, sit- a former sitting president. You do wield incredible amount of power. Uh this isn't like a hashtag sponsored post. Yeah. I want this to be a meaningful conversation. This may be one of the only conversations I get with you in my life. Um, let's do this for real. I don't have enough time to get into this, but I want to let you know that I know, and I want to let the audience know that I'm aware. And then, uh, I buttoned it with the, you know, boxers, briefs, commandos in chief joke. Here's my, let's not talk about it. Okay. Just write down whether or not you're going to host the Daily Show. And then just. Oh, well, let's you, not talk you, about you, it. You, you can write, it, write down your answer and then you put it down. <laughs> okay, and then the it. audience can only see sure, my sure, reaction sure, to sure, it. Sure. 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 Okay. Okay. Got it. Right. Yeah. Good to know. This is what you expected, right? Good to know. Okay. There you go. Fair enough. Speaking of fun, like this being the theme, so there's this photo of us at yes. Andrews Air Force Base. We did this USO show yeah. with David Letterman, John Stewart, John Mulaney, yep. Judd Apatow, and Mike Birbiglia. And then at the time, President Obama, the First Lady, Joe Biden, and Jill Biden That's right. were, there, were there. And I remember, remember there was like a, a bus ride there and a bus ride after. Yes. We, you're uh, referencing a photo on, actually on my wall on of, your of wall. you and me and, and John Stewart and yeah. Letterman and Mulaney and, yeah. and Judd yes. at Andrews Air Force Base. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There was a, yeah, there was a bus. And Kristen Shaw was in the bus yeah. with us. I'm, I'm remembering it. Yes. Yeah. And I remember at the end of like our sets, we were all like, did you do that? Like, how, no, no, no. How yeah. Many, like, like we were all like super analyzing it. And there was this little part of me where I was like, ah, we're overthinking this a little bit too much. 
because it's just a gig and it's a USO gig. We've done this gig yeah. before. Yeah. In fact, like this is light work for all of us. We know how to rip in front of this yeah. audience. And I wish there was this part of me that I was like, we need to act the way my dad did. So Letterman was there, who's obviously a legend to all of us. And I, I remember there was like, there was people that kind of were like staying away from him that were like, Hey, do yeah. we engage with him? Do we like, we weren't shooting the shit with him the way we were. I know. With the way we were all committed. Yeah. And then my dad straight up beelines and goes up to David Letterman and he's like, who is your favorite president to interview? Oh my God. You know? And he goes, I was going to guess Nixon. But, <laughs> but what I loved about like his just like, let's just get right to it. Attitude was, he wasn't like, oh, that's one of the greatest late night hosts in history. Rarely does Letterman come back and do stand up. Like he was gonna, he was like yes. quasi hosting. Yeah, you know. Um, do we? And remember, he was like stretching. He was doing a lot of like stretches. Yeah, backstage. and also, by the way, it's funny you should mention that about yeah. your dad because the yeah. other the other person to talk to him was Mulaney's dad. Mm -hmm. So it was your dad and Mulaney's dad were the only people who actually had the nerve to go up and to talk go talk to, to David to Letterman. But like. We're all surgeons, and we're not going to talk to this other surgeon. Like, do you yeah, know? What but, I mean? And my dad would would have talked to him if he was there too. I think it's honestly, yeah, people who are not in the field of entertainment are just kind of like, yeah, that's just some guy. Some guy. Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Whereas we give a certain like distance yeah. to him. And so to go back to like the thing of it, the Steph of it, and what we were talking about at the beginning. Steph Curry. Of, yeah, Steph Curry, is uh, you can play loose. Like that's yeah. allowed. Yeah. And I think in, in a in a weird way, I also think the art form, culture, and art needs that now. Yeah, I think that's true. There was this moment, I you know, I, I think between 2015 to say like even just this past year where uh, art in and of itself was put on this pedestal of like yeah. it can be a form of resistance. It can be a form uh, to to subvert power structures and all these things. And I think we've all lived through the varying degrees of you do that and you can do these very sanctimonious presentations about its importance. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you're also squelching any fun of it. Or, yes. Or also, that's not the only way to be subversive or interesting. You're making the same point as the movie Tar. Sure, yeah, 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 totally, totally. Yes, I, d I don't know the point of the movie talk. I don't know the point <laughs> no, of the movie No, it, it, it traffics in this uh, topic a little bit, but yeah. no, you're absolutely right. I think that there's a there's a degree to which people just want to laugh, they just want to have a good time at the theater, mm -hmm. just want to have a good time at the movies. Yeah. I mean, Barbie making a billion dollars is a good example of that. Of course, there is a subversion to that. Right. But right. on its face, it's also right. very, very funny. And by the way, like this is a this is a lesson like for me. So I'm gonna apply this to me. I think my um my work would be more interesting if it was that. So this current show that I'm doing. The new hour you're talking about. The new about, hour that I'm doing. Yeah. Uh you know, and I'll start taking it to bigger theaters very, very shortly. Um, but one of the guys who opened for me. He said this to me privately backstage where he was like, hey, it still doesn't have like that like big like Hassan Minhaj like point yeah. at the end. Like our, I'm, I'm waiting for the the point. And I'm like, you know, I don't think th some of the themes that I'm exploring have this clean like yeah. bow tie and it's all it's all done now. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. Yeah. Yeah, I'm touring with an hour right now that doesn't have a, a main event. It doesn't have a thing we're going towards. Yeah. Uh, but that's fun too. Like yeah. I think that the all, like yeah. like comedy, stand up comedy is great in all versions of itself. When the person right. who's on stage cares about what they're talking about, even right. if it's ten different things. Like yes. like my thing is like with a new hour. When you're doing a new hour, like I'm interested in what are you personally obsessed with. I'm always thinking about what am I obsessed with right now. Uh -huh. I'm sort of obsessed with like my daughter's eight. And like, uh -huh. I remember, I remember now being it. Wow, that's crazy. Like I used to be, like, I remember when she was a baby. Yeah. It's kind of like, <laughs> I have a joke about this. It's like, yeah, when you have a baby, it's like an animated sack of rice. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And then it's like a person yeah. who's like, dad, 
I'd like to have dinner now. And you're like, <laughs> oh shit. Wow. Like I gotta like figure out how to teach her yeah. stuff. So Una's in the third grade. Yeah, she's a rising third grader. Dude, I remember that's crazy because I do remember the third grade. I remember Ramona. So do I. Ramona Quimby, age eight. Like oh I remember my God. like my Mrs. crushes Dumphy, in third grade. Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, totally. You remember your teacher? You remember, remember the movies you saw oh, when you were eight? Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah, I mean, so so now I that's my 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 current obsession on stage is like what was I thinking about in third grade and what is my experience with her uh-huh. now and my relationship with my parents when I was th- a kid and what's my relationship with my parents now and all that stuff. Yeah. Like, my question to you is like, what's your obsession? Like, what do you think, what do you think about a lot that you bring on stage? Right now, it's kind of deciphering and I'm kind of working on it through the new show is, uh, <laughs> this is going to sound so weird to say, but trauma and pettiness. Okay. I'm like, I'm a very petty person. I'm all about it. Like, um, <laughs> one of the opening jokes that I have <laughs> is, like, really fucked up. And sometimes people are like, what? One of my favorite things in New York City to do is watching other couples argue in public. Oh, I love it. I fucking love it. And I love it more when my wife is with me. Yes, yes. Like, there's this weird thing where I'm like, they're losing. They won't advance to the Sweet 16. Absolutely. We move on in emotional March Madness. No, it's it's in New in, in in New York City. You get it all the public breakups. Like this is the Paris of public breakups. No, you're absolutely right. Joe and I have been talking about this lately in relation to divorces. Your friends get divorced. Yeah, and you do like a divorce autopsy with your wife. You go, yeah, they didn't communicate. We we communicate. Yes, yeah, like, so right, wait, like right now we're communicating. Right, yeah. right, right. So what is so? Then I was like, there's no word for this in the English language. The like the explicit joy you get in the suffering of others. There's only a yeah. German word for it. Right, Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have it. Schadenfreude, yeah. <laughs> Here it's just, I guess, gossip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like we have American Schadenfreude, which is not only, obviously it's just so German to like enjoy the suffering of others, but we also have this like other thing in America that we love, which is like, I call it like hate and ass energy, which is hate and ass energy. Just hate and ass, <laughs> just mouth breathing ass. Uh. Uh, it's the the explicit hatred in other people's joy. I'm exploring that, like that just, you know what I'm talking about. It's just like the way we talk shit oh, in the green room. forget about just it. Just hate I mean, and ass, <clears throat> mouth breathing ass, jealous, petty. But I'm obsessed with like, why am I thinking this way? Why am I doing this? I have this thing where I'm like starting the joke where I'm like, so like, uh, so I was just like, yeah, yeah, we're in like, you know, we do, we, we do couples therapy and I go like, is it wrong that I try to win? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I did this in front of like Roy, uh, Roy Wood Jr. who's fucking hilarious. And Roy was like, bro, like don't, you don't like, good luck with your marriage if you're gonna do that. But I'm like, but I, oh it's, my God. it's like, I'm telling you, dude, I feel like they double team me. Yeah. Like it will have 60 minutes on the shot clock and they'll be like, so how are we doing? And I'll be like, I think we're doing great. How are we doing? And then it'll just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then with like three minutes left, they'll be like, do you have anything to say? <laughs> you know, I want to explore that. Yeah. The, the subtext of why am, why am I doing this? Like, why do I feel this way that like, do you know what I mean? Why do I feel like I have to defend myself in that way? Or why do I, you know? Yeah. No. And I, I have a line in my show right now where I said my, my love language is keeping score. <laughs> yeah and it's similar because it's yeah. like i think about i mean because if you think about it like a majority of my time is with my wife and my daughter it's like, right it's probably 80 percent plus yes of my time your time with being and your kids is probably like 80 percent of your time yes and it's like it becomes and i wonder with you like how do you how do you draw the line of like well, that actually is one step too far. It's similar to the Obama thing, except it's with your own life. Uh, did we talk about this? But what I will do, and and this is where I just give like uh, Pina just so much props. She lets me be me, mm-hmm. but she does not put constraints on that. Yeah. And basically, her, her her rule is is like, I'll let you can let it fly. At, yeah. At the cellar, at these like small shows. Yeah. Before it goes to Netflix <laughs> yes, or yes. can you show me the doc? Can you show me the Google yeah. doc of what's about to go live? Yeah. Or like before it goes goes to let's say the Chicago theater, like big theaters. She'll be like, can I just see what you're kind of saying? But yeah. she's never pumped the brakes on the ex- exploration yeah. phase of it. 
Um, but then like, I'll show it to her. I'll be like, is there anything that you feel like I should change or feels like mean spirited or is there like a blind spot that I'm having where you could just like dunk on me here? Well, that's what I find is like when I run stuff by Jen, more often than not, she'll point out something that is, uh, that is true Uh also, Uh (laughs) but is uh, contrary to what I'm saying. Yeah. Because, uh, because the best jokes are, I think, multi, uh, uh, point of view. Yeah. So like there was something that we were chatting about and I'm like, Oh, I got to figure this out. Like we were, we were chatting and I go, Hey Bean, have you ever felt this is like the, the thing I was trying to talk about was like being, um, being in trouble in your relationship. Yeah. Like a feeling that you get like, Oh fuck, I'm in trouble. Like, fuck, I'm in trouble. And, um, I have this whole chunk about like in therapy, uh, therapist asked me like, what's your, uh, a lot of people like you that are like first generation immigrants, you have this thing called like good boy syndrome. You mm. feel like you want to make everybody happy. You have like your family, you're sending money overseas to cousins and stuff. You have your brother-in-law, sister-in-law, you have all these things. But good boys sometimes are like hiding a kink. Mm. There's something inside of them that they're not sharing. Yeah. Like, like what's your kink? And I'm just like, I don't know, like acceptance, you know, like my biggest kink would be like if, you know, you know, just my dad came up to me and it was just like, no one's mad at you. Oh my god! Anyway, so there's that that idea. That's a great one. Yeah, so I love that. I'm just working on that, right? And then no one's mad at you anymore. anymore. No, I have the same thing. Yeah, like you're just not in trouble. And then I I was talking to Bean about this. She's like, "Really? Are you gonna do a kink joke?" And I'm like, (laughs) "It it, it, it may or not may not make it in." But I was just like, I was like, "Have you ever felt?" I go, "Bean, have you ever felt like you're in trouble my whole life from the moment I was leaving the house when I was at UC Davis when I was 19 to go to the punchline or or you know to Tommy T's or to go do the open mics. Yeah. I would like sneak out and I'm like, fuck, I'm going to get back at 10 38 PM and I'm going to be in trouble. Yeah. I'm going to be in trouble. I have yeah. to plug this hole sometime. So I'm like, I, fe- I feel like everything that I've done has the majority of my adult life has been some sort of burden. Like, yeah. Oh fuck. He's doing the thing that he's doing. Right. Yeah. Um, I go, have you ever felt like you're in trouble with me? Yeah. She's like, no. And I'm like, that's so interesting. That's great. It's funny because, like, when you're saying the whole "am I in trouble" thing, and Jen and I have this conversation a lot of like, she'll she'll be like, "Am I in trouble for this?" or "Are you mad at me for this?" And it's like, it actually is rarely true. Oh yeah, I find that like uh, like most times that she'll say something like that, I'm like, "No," nah. <laughs> like, but also there's I I think there's it's more like there's an accumulation of, um you know each other and Gaffigan and I were talking about this the other day yeah. on the podcast. It was like, you know the person so well yeah. that you can just squash them if you choose right. to. And right. so as a result, the person in some ways has so it's such a perverse amount of power over you. Uh-huh. That's your you guys both are Oppenheimer in this situation. <laughs> you have your emotional Manhattan project. Which, yes. Yeah, mutually assured destruction. Yes. Sure. sure. But don't you think? Yeah, totally. Would your did your parents ever apologize to each other? Like, have you seen your? Not that I've seen. I will call him. Isn't that crazy? I'll follow up, but I don't think so. No, you I, never you never witnessed your father say to your mother, "I'm I'm sorry," no, or vice versa. No, although there's things about my dad that you know, I'm working on a joke right now about how when I was a kid, my dad would shout. Uh, all you want me to do is send the check. Just send the check. And I remember as a kid just thinking, like, Dad's crazy. Dang. And now I'm a grown-up with a wife and child. I'm like, I know what he means about that. You know what I mean? Like, right. like he's not wrong about the yeah. check. Like, so there are these moments you'll have of, like, um, this ties to the Obama interview, of, like, real emotional honesty. And I've come up to you after shows where I'm like, dude, that's so great that you're doing that. Oh, you thanks. had you had this joke, and I so thought you were going to change it in your last special about I understand why some dads decide to leave. why some dads leave. Yeah, some dads leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I understand. I'm, you're not saying it's right. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, but you I don't get condone it. it but yeah. you're like, I can see that, and I could see how the you can intellectually analyze that joke and be like, don't do that. Yeah, it could, it could be considered cruel. It can be. There's all these other tabs that it opens up. Yeah. But what I loved about the joke and you keeping that joke is don't 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 page A8 of the New York Times. <laughs> don't opinion like 
Well, don't you know? And it's yeah, don't yeah. write this like there's going to be a comment section. Yeah, that's not what comedy comedy's not for a comment section. Sh- sure. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Because the New York Times comment section is actually pretty good. Oh, oh, like sometimes, lit. oh, sometimes it's Sometimes I go like, oh, this, this oh, is as good as the article. Oh, let's dive in. <laughs> <laughs> Take me to page A8 opinion article. I'd be like, okay, this is the hot take comments. Because what's great about that is that like that's being cross-checked, by the way, by New York Times readers. By New York Times readers. Of le- so, again, so that's like coastal liberal elites being yes. like, okay, 324 <laughs> comments just of relative sanity. I I've find re- them to be thoughtful. Uh, yeah, very, very like <laughs> thoughtful. Relatively re- thoughtful. Yeah. Sometimes more than the writer. R- right. Correct. Correct. You know what I mean? So, like some of them are like, yeah, this is a fair point. Yeah. And so uh, the, the, at times what I loved about it is there can be this obsession with what you are saying as if it's congressional testimony yeah. versus you know what I mean. Yeah, no, it's it's, so, it's dance. So it's dance like no one's on watching. I mean. it, yeah, it's dance like no one's watching. Yeah, except it's uh, right comedy like there's no comment section. Correct, correct. It's like, but but you're right. Like, but I the think, soul of it, and I appreciate you keeping the soul and the smudge of it in. Well, it funny. is an emotional smudge. Well, it's funny because I yeah I say in that special I go you know for the first of my life first time in my life I thought I get why dads leave, I'm not gonna do it. That's why I'm comfortable saying it. But I get it. And it's like there were like a handful of people who were like that's. Uh, that's a bridge too far. Yeah, but it was way, way outbalanced by yes. people who said that yeah. was very moving to me. Particularly people whose dads laughed. Wow, that wow. was the that was the most moving part of that whole experience. Totally. And so you also talk about another thing that I like. I thought that was great that you kept in the special. And I'm like, keep this, please, please, for the love of God. You talk about this, your experience going to the red light district. Oh right? yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then, and then you finish the story by being like, am I the way? Like. I think I'm a good guy. <laughs> yes. You know? And I think I'm decent. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think I'm decent. Yeah, yeah. And what's really beautiful about that is like you can intellectualize that move and be like, I already know how this is going to get picked apart and how I could lose the audience yeah. or I could lose a reviewer. Or, yeah, for or, sure. And so what you start to do is you lose, what that does is you lose these like core soul moments that make the show great. Human beings, I think, are allowed to be messy, petty, complicated, uh, not great. Yeah, sure. Make bad decisions. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. I know. And, and I, I would I, say that, that that part of it is actually meeting the current, needs to meet the current moment that 2023, 2024 and beyond needs more than ever. Well, I think, honestly, like, I think this segues into uh, what I would, if we were off air, I would ask you sure. and I would ask myself too, is sure. like, what do you think maybe in your next hour that you're going to crack into that's a flaw of your own that maybe you don't have a joke for yet, but maybe yeah. it's just something that you think about sometimes like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is kind of what makes me not a good boy for, to use your words. Totally. Probably the, the pettiness. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So in other words, like the pettiness of you looking at other couples and being like, they're not like us. Yeah, and all these like little things where I have to have, I mean, one of the things that I talk about in the show is I was like, yeah, I I know there's something clearly wrong with me. One of my most seminal pieces of work is a 70 minute show that I wrote about a girl who wouldn't go to prom with me. (laughs) And I wrote that show when I was 30. Right. That's fucking insane. Right. That is so... I mean, that's, I mean, we are full Drake Petty here. I mean, we're Petty <laughs> King. Drake right? Petty. Yeah, this is like nuts. Yeah. How could you, why, what, what is wrong with you? Yeah. And so it's stuff, stuff like that, that I, that I think is, you know, or like even, you know, we've been, I've been doing these shows with Ronnie where both me and him will be on stage and we'll, we'll roast each go other. Go at each Huston other. Hustin versus Ronnie, yeah. Ronnie versus Hustin, or Hustin hates Ronnie, Ronnie hates Hustin. <laughs> and we'll just go at each other. Yeah. And people will be like, whoa, this is like unhinged What's behavior. the thing he says to you that you're like, that actually hurts? Is there anything? Oh, wow. Uh, I mean, he said one that just bodied me. I asked him, uh, uh, I think he got invited to uh, Chappelle Summer Camp. And I said this on stage. I go, I, so I'm, we're basically airing out our grievances as friends. And I go, Ronnie, I asked you if I could go to summer camp with you. You know what I mean? And 
if I could be your plus one and go with you. And you, you were like, oh, I'm going to bring Hannah instead or whatever. And then he goes, sorry, like Dave wants to hang out with funny people, not people that do PowerPoint. Oh, my God. And it fucking destroyed. Oh, my God. It destroyed. So it wrecked funny. the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, they, they're not going to have a PowerPoint like projector in Yellow Springs, Ohio. You can't teach you can't show us like a, a bell curve of like <laughs> a, like a bell curve of democracy or whatever. And he's like, yeah, we, they, he just wants to be with funny people. And he's fucking Ronnie is roast in, in the crowd is going crazy. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're right. I, you know, and it was just I was crushed. What's the biggest challenge in your life on a day-to-day basis? What's the thing where you're like, I just can't find the time to blank? I mean, it the is your joke, man. Is the you have this joke about parenting where you it's not winning, surviving is winning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, man, like I'll give you just an example, a hard example this week. Um, I have to help my daughter with her homework. She has these like little like homework packets that she does. And my son really wanted me to He's so I have a five five and a half year old daughter and then a th- three year old son, a uh, three and a half year old son, and he's into basketball now. Like he wants to play basketball. Oh. He's, he sometimes walks by the park and like sees some of like the boys playing basketball. Um, and uh, my wife was like, "He really wants to play. Like you should take him to go play now." Yeah. When I tried to take him when he was a little bit younger, it was just too much. Like the ball's bouncing way above his. He's it. The rim's too high. It's just sure. all too much. Sure but he kind of like wants to like bounce the ball with both hands. Yeah. Now I can see him. And just this week I was supposed to take him to go do that, but he's, he's duly conflicted cause he's really into trucks and sand right now. Yeah. So he was in the trucks and sand and then I went to go do that. And then I'm like leaving to go do this podcast. And earlier this afternoon being asked me like, Hey, have you taken him to go play basketball this week? Yeah. You said you'd take him to go play basketball this week. And I'm leaving for the road tomorrow. Oh my gosh. And I'm like, fuck, I haven't. I have the ball. Like, I have the little Franklin, yeah. small, kid size wow. rubber basketball. Yeah. The tiny one. And just, like, we didn't get around to doing it. And it breaks my heart. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. I am a bad dad. And you're not. I mean, I think... But I, like, bought the ball from Ace Hardware. Yeah. Like, there's an Ace Hardware down the street. Like, have it in my the trunk. Like, I'm like, all right, like, we're going to go do it. Yeah. But I got caught up doing his other things. What's but I didn't do the thing. I didn't yeah. do the memory, the core memory. I didn't do it. Right. But what's I think about this all the time with Una because I'm just like, I could be with her right now, I yeah. I could be downstairs. Yeah, we could be making a puzzle. Yes, you know, yeah. we could be watching the tennis documentary. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, but ultimately, then you think back to your own childhood and you're like, oh well, actually, like a lot of my core memories were just being with my friends or being alone. I know, dude. <laughs> and then there's this thing of like, by the way, talking about the theme of being in trouble. This is like, I, I'm like, fuck, I'm in trouble, not with her. I'm talking about, like, I'm in trouble, like, dude, am I a bad dad? Am I not pouring everything into this guy? Because what I what I mean by that is that, like, I should have at some point, I don't know, if I could, I'm Monday morning quarterbacking here, but, like, um, he's obsessed with chicken nuggets right now. Like, he'll just <laughs> eat chicken nuggets. So I'd, like, cut, I'll get these chicken and I'll chop, chop them, a nugget into four. Yeah. But this dude will just fist them and wolf them down but what i could have done and we were watching like something on pbs or whatever like pbs kids or whatever what i could have done after we finished i was like let's just sit down and watch this I, sometimes i'll take a layup yeah like if i see an easy path the basket i'm like oh fuck yeah you just like wolf down these nuggets and like now you want to watch this for 30 minutes i get to like sit and kind of like i can take a quick power nap on the thing with you yeah fuck yeah let's do it yeah but i totally could have been like hey let's go like yeah. to the park and like let's go shoot but i didn't yeah i took like an easier way out and now that I'm gu- I'm guilty. I'm gonna be gone Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I'm like, fuck. I could have done that. And am I a ba- bad dad because of that? You're not. I mean, like, man, we've had a we had we've had a tricky summer because Shuna. This is a bit that I was trying to do last weekend, but it's like she. We took her to a birthday party at yeah. this place called Urban Air. Have yeah. you ever heard of these places? Uh, the, the trampoline places, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Totally. Like a big warehouse, like yeah, 40 yeah. trampolines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's like the... And you, you play dodgeball on them, um, and yeah, it's crazy. It's yeah. like, they give you this form to sign uh-huh. when you walk in, and it's like all the worst things that could happen. Yeah. It's like, and they pa- all... Your, ki- your kid gets paralyzed. <laughs> I've read it. It's fucking crazy. It's crazy. And then it all happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah all the stuff happens. Uh-huh. Um, 
She broke her foot at this thing. Luna broke her foot at... Yeah. Awful. Oh, Awful. no. And then uh, the one thing that's not in those forms is that you, you, know, you actually can talk about it on your podcast. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> got it. But you can't sue them. But you, you can't sue them. Yeah, but yeah, you yeah. can mention it. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can mention yeah. that some. Unpleasant. You can monetize it on YouTube. Right? Yeah, yeah, got exactly. it. Understood. But yeah, like, yeah. she. Uh, but I had a funny thing the other day where I'm forming it into a joke. Sure. Long term, but it's like she was in a cast for like four weeks, and it was a, it was because a kid jumped in, a boy jumped in front of her, and sure, it could have been anybody. But she said to me, she goes, "Dad, boys are terrible." And I said, you're absolutely right. And it's not even for the reasons you're thinking. <laughs> oh, that's a great joke. <laughs> that's a phenomenal joke. And then I started explaining the patriarchy yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah, she yeah, kind of sure. like lost interest. Sure. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but yeah, that's there, great. a lot of my stuff right now is like figuring out like, yeah. honestly, like it's my life struggle of like, what, what do I have to teach? What can I teach? Right. You know, right. she's, she's going to go through all the stuff the yeah. kids go through. And yeah. I have to explain it as best I can. There is this store so this summer um they're at have, have you guys done disneyland yet no okay so my eldest she's definitely disneyland age okay what i i this is my take i think prime disneyland age and there's going to be some disney adults that get mad at me but <laughs> let's not even get into that yeah yeah that's the I, comment section Forget i think, about I think it's five to eight i think it's when you look at mickey you don't think it's just like there's a sweaty dude wearing a mickey costume that's very astute and it's five to eight that yes. you're like and i i remember when i met the cast of Tailspin when I in second grade, I'm seven, and I still went up and hugged them. I met Chip and Dale and like danced with them. And I wasn't thinking, oh, there's a junior in high school dancing with this me is right a now. a great observation. Okay. As soon as you get to fourth or fifth grade, yeah. you, you can see in Mickey's eyes, you're like, there's a person <laughs> in there. There's like a dehydrated guy <laughs> who's gonna be chugging Pedialyte. You know what I mean? <laughs> as soon as this is over. You see, like, the humanity in it. I'm but, joking on yeah, ice right but my, now. But my daughter, when she met Fantasia Mickey, there's mm-hmm. this great photo I'll share. I'll show you it. She hugs Mickey, and she closes her eyes. So she's just, like, she, she gets on her knees, and she hugs Mickey like this. You know what I mean? And she really believes she met Mickey Mouse. It was, like, the yes. most beautiful yeah. thing ever. And what's beautiful, again, about the experience, everybody there at Disneyland, I mean, it is racially diverse, economically diverse, politically di- diverse. You got fucking MAGA there. You got Antifa. Everybody's there. Oh, yeah. All the, all the park oh, goers. Oh, dude. Yes. Every, the star of the show is not Democrats, Republicans, blacks, whites, rich, poor. It's, it is, we are here to see Lightning McQueen and Mickey and all the Never thought characters. about that. Oh, yeah. We're here for a common vision, which is joy. Yeah. Like, we're here for unbridled joy yeah. and fantasy. Yeah. Okay? And we want my kid to be able to experience that. Yeah. And it's a very beautiful thing. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of criticism of... Disney and corporate, uh, yes, full agreement. I'm talking about just the idea of unbridled joy and fantasy yeah. of that. Very beautiful. But there was this moment where you go to California Adventure and there's this thing in Cars Land where you actually do the like Lightning McQueen racetrack. Yeah. Okay? You got to wait in line. It's like two hours. It's a lot. And everybody there is humbled by it's really beautiful. I was just like, I'm fucking tired. My back hurts. I'm in cargo pants. But then this guy's in cargo pants too. And we're just in cargo pants with our fucking hats and our sunglasses and like the sunblock and just like <laughs> chugging water with a backpack. And we are all humbled by life. Yes. Like right in that moment. Just life is straight up humbling us. But the, there's this family in front of us. They get to the ride. And the ride is really fast. And one of the kids, he's like six. You have to be taller than 42 inches to ride the ride. He doesn't want to get on the ride. And we've been waiting, mind you, like an mm. hour and 40 minutes. And the mom turns around and she's like, Brendan, Brendan, this is your chance. And then she looks at him and she goes, we're not coming back. Oh, no. You know? And in the moment, the, like, the kid like looks at me. In the joke, I'm like, you know, like, you're not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> You are not. <laughs> Get on the ride. Oh my god, dude! Because just do the mental math. One fifty a ticket. There was fucking you're six not of back. you, bro. I yeah yeah. Bro, and, you're and, not coming back. And they're back. from Cincinnati, so I was like, not even direct flight. You're not fucking <laughs> coming back. Get on. Get on. Get on right now, dude. That is a great and, joke. But it was like this allegory for life. Yes. No. Absolutely. Dude, I had this thing, and it's like. One of my dreams and why, like, I when I met you, I was just like, fuck, I met you or I met Melanie. Like, 
or Dimitri Martin, again, as a kid growing up in Davis, you guys did Conan. Mm. And on my Vimeo page, there's like Hassan Minhaj Conan submission v8.mov. Oh like, so I kept sending it to V8. V8. Oh, I love it. V8. And there's heartbreaking ones. Version you, 8 for, version the, for the viewers at yeah. home. Yeah. So but you can check the views. And some oh. of them are still sitting at zero. For real? Yeah. So they weren't opened. And then when Conan ends, I was like, oh, fuck, I never got to You're do. You're going to send it to Conan. Conan. I never got to do Conan. You should. Well, I, I can't. I can't subvert it because now when – you know how Conan has his pot Conan O'Brien needs oh, friends. right. But all of his friends are people that have done Conan. Oh, my God. That's so funny. For the most part. No, you should ask to go on that podcast because yeah. he would love that story. Yeah. He would be so – that would make him so happy. Yeah, yeah. But that story that I lived through and I never get to do Conan. I mean, and I this was to do stand-up on Conan. Five minutes. Okay. Five minutes yeah. on Conan. Yeah. That's – oh, I love that. You got to go yeah. on Conan O'Brien needs a friend. And tell that yeah, story yeah. and then play the dream. The dream. The dream. The dun, 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 dun. And then you walk out. Or, uh, well, it's funny because. And I still remember the like the purplish, glittery, sort of weird backdrop. Oh, my God. Like, yeah, it was the dream. It's on, and I would see the videos on MySpace. I'd go, whoa. Like, yeah. Kumail Nanjiani was on Conan. Oh, my God. Yeah. That must be so fucking cool. Maybe, you'll, maybe you could weigh in on this because it yeah. sounds like we have. Yeah. Uh, maybe you could weigh in on this because, I, because I've been telling from my girlfriend's boyfriend show i've yeah. been recently retelling this story about going on the scrambler which is a ride at the carnival yeah and how when i was like in seventh grade i asked this girl to go on the carnival with me and i thought it was gonna be my first kiss and then yeah, i yeah, yeah. i basically end up like going on the scrambler and i throw up on the scrambler and it ends up on this yeah on this special and and uh and it's a fun story to tell but i've been this is from one of your early albums yeah, yeah. right yeah, yeah. from my girlfriend's boyfriend yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 2011 or something like that yeah and I've been telling that story on stage lately because I've been thinking about it in relation to like Una's eight years old. She's in third grade, and like you know, like like we're starting to tell her about you know drugs and sex and grown up stuff. But th but I have this. But I tell the scrambler story. Yeah. In the context of like flashing back to my own childhood. Right. And I've been just thinking about the idea of calling my show, uh, please stop the ride. Cause that's what I say to the scrambler operator. Go, please stop the ride. Cause uh, I know I'm going to throw up. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but I've just been thinking a lot about lately how when you're a kid, your life is a lot like a ride. You don't yeah. feel like you can make many choices uh -huh. or at least I did really I always felt. Yeah. I always felt like you have to show up to school. You gotta leave at three o'clock. Mm. You gotta go to the program. You gotta go to wow. camp in the summer, whatever it is. My view on it's so different. Oh. Yeah, but then, but then my, but then where it's going is that when you grow up, weirdly, uh, my experience is I still feel like I'm on the ride. I still feel like I, I can't quite do exactly the thing I want to do. Right. I, feel, I gotta make the flight. I gotta be in Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah. I gotta be in Austin. You know. Yeah. And and not that I don't See, I feel love that, that and part feel. Of it. It's not that I don't love it and feel gratitude for it, but I'm also sometimes like, oh my god, can I can I get off the ride for uh, a moment? You know, gosh. like there's this great line. Kate Berlant was on the podcast recently, and she goes, <laughs> she goes, life. She goes, it's crazy when you realize that life is consecutive. Oh wow! And you're like, that's oh, great. Isn't that great? Yeah. But she's so right. Yeah. Life is consecutive. Yeah. So I'm, I feel like I'm grappling with that recently. Oh, yeah. So to me, the thing that I think about the most is like even when you were on the Scrambler as a kid, just I just felt this as a kid. Like there's this like unsigned rapper energy of like, you motherfuckers, just wait till I get the fuck out of here. Like then it's on because a kid is all possibility. The sun is rising. When you mean when you're on the ride? What, I'm talking when about- When you're a kid. When you're a just kid. Just a kid at all. When- you have to go to that camp that you don't want to go to. Yeah. Or they take you to your aunt's place and you don't want to be there. Right. You're like, just wait. Just wait till Someday. My, my time is my own. Someday. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Your, your every debut rapper's first album. Just, <laughs> your, your Get Rich or Die Trying. Your 50 Cent's debut. Just fucking wait. You are the Marshall Mathers LP. Just fucking wait till I get signed. Just wait till I get out of this fucking house. Wow. It's on. The sun is rising. It's, yeah. You, you are all possibility. The same reason why, like, if I meet Una or if you meet my daughter or my son, what could they be? That he could be an improviser. He Absolutely. could be a doctor. He could be an engineer. He could be, he could be anything. There's all these possibilities. What's crazy is as you get older, the sun is starting to set. It's true. Doors are 
are closing and there is no going back. You're absolutely right. Brandon, get on the fucking ride. We're not get coming on the ride. back. You're not, you're not coming back. I'm never doing Conan. It's not happening. But let's scale. Let's do this at scale. I never got to do a Comedy Central half hour. Yeah. It was a dream. I was like, oh, man. And they write your name and right. on the back. There are things that you will want in life that you do not get. And it, the, the losses become bigger. This a loved one gets cancer. Oh, yeah. A, a parent dies. Yeah. The, the door's closed. You're, you're burying dad in the ground. Dirt. Throwing dirt on it. The tombstone. It's over. And those things become realer. Like, as you get older. And I'm feeling that more. It is not an intellectual game. It is a feeling thing. Of like, dude, my mom had her second knee replaced. Oh, man, she needs to take her diabetes medication. I am watching them enter this part of their life where yep. I have to parent them. And this is very weird. And also what, what I've realized is like... And doors are closing. you right. memories and doors of that are closing. Uh, the way I think about it sometimes is is so many of my dreams have come true. Mm -hmm. But when your dreams come true, you realize that they never happened the way you thought they were going to. Yeah, true. And, and, and because your dream from 2001 is not is not what it looks like in 2023. Right. Because the whole world changes. The thing that you thought that you could do totally is a 180 from what yeah. it was. Is that what your Letterman set was? Where you're like, I, I'll do Letterman and it'll change everything. And then it, do, it doesn't. Yeah. And you're like... You wake up the next day and you go, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Still broke. Still trying, <laughs> yeah. to, still trying yeah. to figure out how to pay yeah. my rent. Yeah. And, yeah. So like that is what adulthood has felt like to me. Yeah. I felt like these just... The, the these doors kind of closing. Yeah. Or I can now sense doors closing. Yeah. Even in my body. Sometimes I'll sit on the couch, like I'm going back to Sacramento next week, and sometimes I'll sit on the couch. My dad is 72, and then my son is like two, and I'm 37. So I'm like the half, I'm the Rihanna halftime show. But, you know. <laughs> and they're both on like two ends of the couch, like on the iPad, doing the same thing, being like, eh, like they're both angry at the iPad. <laughs> And I'm just in the middle. Oh, I love this. But I'm hurtling towards this. I'm hurtling towards, towards not your father. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And so like, I'm just like kind of like sitting there in between them. I love that like, visually, by the way. I'm just like, okay, it's going this way. Yeah. And you know, my dad, my, his body type and my body top is very similar. So when I look at that, I'm like, this is where it's going, buddy. Right. Like, it's good. It, it, this is the way it's going to end. Yeah. What are you doing in between? In the, yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh my god! And that's where I feel so bad. Where I'm like, "Fuck, we didn't play basketball this week." <sighs> that's gonna do it. This is getting too heavy. Um, <laughs> this is getting, this is getting like so I love real. it though. I love it. No, really? I, are you kidding me? This, this is my favorite part. Funny. This is my favorite part. <laughs> this is not very funny. No, I it's love this, sad. and I, I think this. I hope this is what your next hour is about. Yeah, stuff like this. Yes. So, okay, the final thing we do is working it out for a cause. Is there a nonprofit that you like to support, and we will plug them on here? And donate to them and link them in the show notes? Um, one uh, nonprofit that I love, um, I'm going to plug the, the nonprofit that my wife works for, Vituity Cares Foundation. Oh, nice. Great. Yeah. We will, I will donate to them. I'll link to them in the show notes and encourage folks to, 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 to contribute as well. Yeah. Um, Hassan, congratulations on everything like you're just crushing in so many ways and crushing as a dad i'm so you're yeah. saying i'm not in trouble you're yeah. not in trouble not your in kids trouble. are lucky to have you thank you man you are the steph curry of comedy oh dude that's not even true but I same height it. same height come on there we go